previously on the Undercover Insurer. Clients expect a high level of customer service as a given. So if I was to ask your customers what they thought of Autoline, mm -hmm. what would they say? Is it about service? Is it about I'd having the best both. price? What I wanted to do is take one of you back to London with me and uh, tell them it's straight uh, so that we can actually learn from it and change things. Uh, the person I wanted to take back was Denise. Three insurance professionals were given the mission to find out what brokers really thought of insurers. However, the brokers they spoke to were completely unaware that they were actually talking to personal line specialists from Zurich. Beweiser has been ranked twice as one of the UK's fastest growing private companies in the Sunday Times Fast Track 100. Founded in 2007 above a local branch of Iceland, the broker now employs 500 people in Hampshire, servicing over 150,000 customers. Trudy Archer is the head of customer service UK Personal Lines at Zurich. But today, as the undercover insurer, Trudy is visiting Beweiser's and over headquarters under the guise of an insurance consultant to meet the staff who make the firm tick, none of whom know her true identity or that the standout employee will win an iPad. Well, I'm at Beweiser today, going in as an insurance expert undercover, uh, but of course they won't know that I actually work for Zurich. Uh, feeling a bit nervous about that but also excited. In terms of what I want to find out is, uh, you know, get some insight on what they think of insurers and also customers, understand how their interaction is with the insurance companies, is there things that insurers can do better and also how much focus is on customer service when they're interacting with the customer. To prepare for her day at Beweiser, Trudy met with Chairman Mark Bauer Dyke who, with over 30 years' experience as an insurance broker and insurance underwriter, was one of the co-founders oh, of the business. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice Take a seat. Mark, in terms of the BeWiser story, I'm really keen to understand how, how long you've been established and what is your vision for the future going forward? BeWiser was founded in 2007. We started trading towards the end of 2007. Uh, basically, what, what it was, was um, I uh, owned a previous insurance brokers. I sold that, retired, was going around the world. Uh, fortunately, fortunately, I say now, but fortunately they uh, made re all my directors redundant uh, and they came to me and said, did we want to do it again? And that's how BeWiser was, f was formed. Uh, our vision it, is the same vision we've had since, we've been, uh, since I've been in insurance, is to offer a quality product at uh, uh, the right price for the customer. And that's the founding position we are from BeWiser. We don't sell on being cheapest, we don't sell on, um, on some dream of what you're going to get, we actually tell you know, we we work on the basis of selling quality at the right price, and the customer understanding what they're purchasing. You mentioned earlier the commitment to your people. Uh, can you explain to me what your focus is in terms of developing your people, and in particular professional qualifications? The big thing in, in the brokerage is that you're only you can only grow at a certain rate. You can only grow by. Now for each person I take on board, I will sell X number of policies. I want to only sell those X number of policies once they become sort of qualified or they, they know what they're doing. Uh, so from a business point of view, it's far in our advantage to make sure that our staff are, are trained right from the very beginning because they then become productive far, lots more quickly. Um, what we've done to that is we've, we've set up, right from the very beginning, we set up an in-house training program. Uh, which is now developed into being our academy. And what we what, what we do is we take when we take in people that are new to insurance, uh, they go through a six to eight week training program, which includes actually taking exams and passing those exams. And then once they pass those exams, they're allowed out to talk to customers and and to be developed onwards from there. Um, at the moment, uh, we've got something like about two hundred and fifty people that are CIR, CII qualified. Uh, our goal, and we're at the moment about 550 staff, our goal is by March that every, every member of staff will be CIR. CII. Marcus selected six employees to sit down with Trudy to answer questions about what it's like to work at Beweiser, including its culture, ethos and relationships with insurers. The employees think that they are being filmed as part of a corporate video. However, 
None of them know Trudy's real identity or that they are competing for a prize. Satch, can you just tell me a bit about what you do at BeWiser? Yeah, um, my role here is as an underwriter. Uh, I started out in October uh, just this year, so it's all brand new for me. Uh, so lots of learning, lots of studying to do as well. Um, basically, my role is to help the agents who can't get prices on screen, so more non-standard stuff. So it's a lot of liaison with insurers trying to get prices. So, for example, it might be um, people with criminal convictions or modifications, something that's a bit out of the ordinary, and doing that liaison with insurers to try and generate new business as well. And how, how does that uh, interaction with the insurance companies, how do you find that? Yeah, good. It's definitely a learning experience because you see maybe the other side of insurance. Um, working in brokers is predominantly sales-based, and that's what I've done before. Um, but it's good to see the other side of insurers. And though they are actually human as well, to be fair, they're not as uh, boring as they make out. So it's, yeah, it's good to liaise and learn about the other aspect of insurance as well. Diana, how did you end up working for an insurance broker? Well, um, I did my degree at University of Leicester and I did a degree in biological sciences. Um, while I was at university, I worked for a financial services company and I really wanted to work for a company like that works in with financial services. So when I came across the BeWiser advert online, I was inst instantly interested. So I applied for it and I got it. And how, how do you think BeWise will approach your personal development? They're very supportive um, from what I've seen so far and from talking to the other graduates as well. And I think they will give me one-on-one -on -one support if I need anything, if I need any extra help um, with any modules or anything. Mm -hmm. And I know they do a lot of um, internal promoting as well, which is quite good because can, I can progress in the company as well. So just talk me through what your, a typical day would look like for you here. A uh, typical day here is, well, we have sort of 10 hours study time a week. Um, so this morning, say, I have been in a session for two hours with our trainer, Carl. Um, he sort of runs through the course with us, teaches us um, bits and bobs about it. And then he'll give us like a workbook, things to do. Um, the last couple of hours I've been in a self-study session. Uh, so they give us time in the company day to be able to sort of go out, finish off your workbooks, do some extra research, things like that. And then, yeah, the rest of it is I'm currently an acting team leader in customer services. Um, so looking after the team, making sure they're all good, so yeah, getting the work done. Okay. Just picking up on your, on your comment there around a team leader in customer services, how much of your training covers sort of the leadership and, and customer requirements as well as the technical side? Well, we had quite a heavy um, period in the run-up to, uh, well, over summer, um, where we were all looking at applying for these team leadership roles. And so we had a lot of time of looking at team leaders. We wrote, um, I think, five or six assignments on, based on sort of KPIs and how to deal with your team, things like that. Mm -hmm. And the last couple of weeks as well, we've been doing two-hour sessions a week, which sort of throughout the company for team leaders, where they teach about leadership styles. So yeah, it's a very heavy focused thing on how to be a good leader as well as your technical knowledge. And then just finally, looking at the market currently, um, what sort of what elements of your training cover up sort of the current market trends that you're seeing within personal lines out there, for example? Um, well, I think sort of with current trends, a lot of it will be extra research that we do with our technical knowledge. So, say, if our motor insurance at the moment, obviously we have to look at the acts that are being passed in Parliament and looking at how you know, insurance is developing as, as new things get passed because obviously sort of with say online insurance and things like that, regulation is changing massively at the moment to compensate for it. And so yeah, a lot of sort of, there's a lot of byproduct from our basic, um, our base studies that then comes across into our technical, like our day-to-day -day work. Stuart, can you tell me how long you've been working in the insurance industry? Certainly, uh, I started in 1968 and apart from a brief break of five years in the army, ever since. So you've seen a lot of change coming through. Oh yes, yeah, certainly. We didn't have any computers when I started. It was all fountain pens and newfangled biros. Yeah. And in terms of personal lines, do you think personal lines business is just about price and the customers aren't interested in service or what they, you know, what they get in terms of the policy content? They shop on price. Everybody shops on price with the advent of the um, computers, everyone has a, a PC so they all investigate at home or they go to these um, aggregator sites. But in actual fact when it comes down to it, uh, a lot of people do buy 
what they know and what they believe to be a good product. Mm. You know, the big names sell. You very rarely find people selling, uh, buying something which they don't know the name of. If they've never heard of the name, they're unlikely to buy that product. Mm. So what, what role do you think is the most important role that you can play for the customer when they contact you? Uh, as in my role in specifically or to our customer service agents, yes, you mean, sorry? Yes, in terms of your role specifically and the agents that the customers speak okay. to. Okay, I would say for me, I'm there to show a good leadership to my staff. I think what's a good example of me is that I have started right at the bottom. So I try to use my story as an example to our staff because we do have a lot of uh, agents joining us who are in the age ranges of 16, 17, 18, um, who've left school maybe trying to find a career path and I use my um, story as an example. My world's changed quite a lot over the sort of past five and a half years since uh, I've been at BeWiser so my role is to be their support and be the kind of body behind what they need really. Um, and then from the customer's point of view um, what the customer's looking for from our staff is to have good service um, we, we spend a lot of time and money investing in our, in our customer service agents and all of our staff across BeWiser. So for us, it's making sure that our staff are highly trained, giving out the correct advice and customer service starts immediately from when that customer picks up that phone to call us. Anything that they need, we need to be given um, a good service um, and that starts with giving good training to our staff. James, can you give me an example of when you've gone that extra mile you know, to, to meet the customer's needs? Yeah, of course. Yeah, There's One example is um, with regards to uh, we had an incident with some no claims bonus. The call actually did get escalated, so I had to talk to them myself as they'd gone to like a manager's call and so on and trying to explain the issues with the policy. And what happened was it was a, a private car policy where the gentleman actually, it was on a pickup truck, so it was on a commercial vehicle policy previously, and the insurance company that he'd been put with didn't actually accept commercial vehicle no claims bonus on a car policy. Um, so it had gone through our referral teams and everything else, it had all come back as a no. Customer naturally wasn't happy because they thought they'd taken out a policy and was going to be able to use their no claims bonus without having to pay any more. So I actually, because of my background and I had ins insurance experience before, I actually phoned the insurers myself and explained the situation and actually managed to get it agreed that we could honour the no claims bonus on the policy. That way it stopped any issues of any further complaint and the customer was happy and they carried on insuring with us. I'm pretty sure they are now. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. You talk about um, you made the call yourself to the insurance companies. We've got some, you know, big players out there. You've got the Vivas of this mm. world. You know, you've got Zurich. Do you find that an advantage or a disadvantage if they're the larger sort of global organisations? Um, no, not really. I think they're all. I mean, we, we get to know which insurers are good for others and, and who we can speak to and who yeah. will be more helpful or who are happy to do certain or make certain decisions mm -hmm. and things like that. But. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, there are some big companies out there, but I think because they are that big now, they all have their own sort of set areas that, that look after mm. different brokers and things like that. They're, they're, there's account managers for each one and, and everything else. So, yeah, there's not really much difference in dealing with them. I think the more more business we put their way, they, they tend to be a bit more accommodating with regards to speaking to them more purely due to the policies that we have. Having spoken to the employees, Trudy now has the tough task of deciding who should be rewarded with the iPad and a chance at winning a £1,500 personal development fund as the overall series winner. So where I am in deciding you know, who my favourite is, you know, I've had great insight from, from everyone, so it's going to be a real challenge in terms of me picking out one person. Marcus pulled the six employees into an important meeting. However, none of them are aware that the real reason they are being called together is for Trudy to reveal the true purpose of her visit. <clears throat> okay, so uh, thank you for today. Um, now I know that uh, you all thought that we were uh, shooting a promotional video um, for Be Wiser. Um, but actually, we weren't doing that at all. Um, I'm actually uh, work for Zurich Insurance Company. I'm head of customer service, and we have been actually filming um, to enable us to produce a documentary to understand how um, insurance companies uh, can add more value to brokers and to get your insight really into the interactions uh, in terms of what advantages there are to interacting with us as an insurance company, but also what they are in terms of disadvantages. Um, so it has enabled me to take away a lot of insight um, and certainly given us food for thought from an insurance company perspective. Um, 
Now I was asked to choose uh, one of you as a favourite, which was difficult because as I said, I had some good conversations with all of you. However, I have chosen um, an individual and that was Max. So well done, Max. I'm really happy about having won. I uh, wasn't expecting to win anything, kind of a shock, but yeah, it's been really good. So, I mean, I've got to be thankful to be wise from the graduate scheme because most of the comments there have been about my technical knowledge and looking forward, and if it wasn't for being on a graduate scheme, I wouldn't have got that knowledge. So yeah, I was really happy, really chuffed. Some really good, useful, rich conversations with, with the guys from Be Wiser, not just about the technical side of insurance, but their requirements and needs from the insurance company to enable them to deliver to their customers um, and to also to enable them to prepare for the regulatory challenges that we have on the horizon um, and really get a better view on their life inside a broker. But also for me, what was encouraging was the Be Wiser graduate scheme um, and the talent that they're clearly bringing through. Next time on The Undercover Insurer. I'm here today at Coast, uh, obviously I'm from Zurich, the people uh, I'll be seeing today don't know I'm from Zurich. My background is handling mainly motor claims, so on the basis of that there is a, a change but obviously the main emphasis is on customer service. And the, the winner of a, an iPad is...